Welcome to Behind the Song with Missy Shackleford. <coughs> oh, this is so weird. I know, it is weird, isn't it? I we just, can talk about all the things that we talk about in private and public now. Yeah, exactly, right. yeah. exactly. And which I firmly have said we should get a podcast, but honestly, I never can figure it we'd out. We get flagged so quick, right, though. So we quick, would. but I feel like we'd have all the followers. Some dark also. stuff. It gets dark. bad. Yeah. Get the darker, the better. Um, I feel like um, there's some advice maybe you would have for some of the junior songwriters, particularly the junior songwriters. And if you'll notice in your programs, we're missing a few songwriters tonight, which. Um, that have other obligations, and um, so they're not here, So, but they're in the program. Um, bye. One of their dads just left. Jonathan didn't think I would print his quote in the program, and I did. You can let him know. Please take that home. Um, yes, I'm excited about that. But some of our junior songwriters are in the position. They're like, have parts of a song. They're like, oh, I'm just not feeling it. Like, you know, I've got this part of a song, and I'm just like, Maybe, maybe this isn't working out for me. Do you have some advice that you could lend them? Well, I do want to start out by saying, at least from my end, there's no right way to begin writing a song. And I, f I feel like, a, you know, anybody over here would agree with me that written amazing songs, you know. Um, I think as far as getting stuck, having, having writing block is a big thing. I actually was in it for a while. And I haven't just started writing new material until recently. I think I like in the past three weeks or so, just because I've been so stressed, I was just like, I had I don't have time to do my homework, but I'm gonna try to write a song somehow. It's just wild. Do you, don't you feel like that happens though? Like oh, you yeah. get clogged up in there as an artist? Mm -hmm. It's it's kind of the inevitable thing that I feel like is gonna happen because as songwriters, your mind's going so many different directions at once, and so being able to rein that in and kind of think for a second, okay, just get something down is probably one of the first things I'd say because that song that I just did there I have a full instrumental p thing but I couldn't initially record it that way so I did an acoustic version of it so get that thought out there so that it can be out there you can take a look at it face to face and be like okay this is what we're dealing with mm -hmm. um, so rough skeletons are important but also I feel like if you're stuck Try writing on a different instrument. Just try something new. That's a fantastic idea. So for some of you guys that get stuck, and I know even some of our older songwriters do get stuck, try it on a different instrument. I know that that has helped mm -hmm. fundamentally. That's with one thing that helped RJ out. Yeah, yeah actually it did. When yeah, yeah, it's it's crazy because it changed a lot of your style up, well, if you and, recall. And, I, and, it, and not to interrupt, you know, with RJ especially, one of the things that I remember him saying, he's like, everything sounds like a piano ballad. I'm like, because you're playing on piano, dude. Yeah. That's why. I was like, <laughs> transfer it to a guitar or right. drums, djembe, I don't care what it is. Just find something. But that's what yeah. we always say. Like, everything sounds like singer-songwriter. It is singer-songwriter. Yeah, because you're with you acoustic your guitar singer and a yeah. Until you get in the studio, <laughs> and that's when everything changes, which we were talking about. Okay, Jake, I have one last question for you, and then RJ, you be prepared to come up. Um, what's your... How do you feel right now? <laughs> that was so honest. I was, yeah, I was. Just, <laughs> I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be honest. I was, being that I was the last one, and I kind of just talked to Missy maybe a couple days ago. I was just like, <laughs> so what's going on? She's like, well, you're closing the show. I was like, oh, <laughs> that sounds like thanks, a Missy. Missy. Thing. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Um, <laughs> but honestly, I feel like after getting the new material out there, seeing how people respond to it, it's it's rewarding. It really it, is. It, this new material I'm obsessed with. I love the whole soul. I feel like you're digging in to a whole different place. And that's also what happens as an artist. I know that Jacob and I had even discussed it, that sometimes you can stay true to your brand as an artist and still be able to venture out a little bit with some different melodies and different things. So I think that's important mm -hmm. for songwriters to know. Um, what's your process? Is it lyrics first, melody first? Um, I'll, I'll do Say Something, for instance. Um, so Say Something, um, I think I'm pretty sure I came up with the melody. I was in the shower at college. I know that's where Everything a lot of Everything happens in the shower. It's great acoustics. Great yes, acoustics. No, yes. um, I was just kind of humming this melody. I was like, okay. So I had the melody, and then I was like, well, what's the story here? Because that's always my thing is whether it's lyrics, if you have the chorus first, if you have a verse first, if you have, if you have just instrumentals, you have just drums, mm -hmm. what's the story? What are we right. saying? Right. right. And so I have this thing where I call it like the essay method because in reality a song is just an essay condensed down. 
your chorus is your thesis statement. Oh my god, thesis statement. That's that, you o- that, you, that you overdo, your verse one is your intro, and all this other stuff. That's but, a great way to break it down, which I know I've said that some to you Which if you're an English major in here, I just saved y'all some cool points right there <laughs> with your students or something. Right, but, right. Um, no, if, as far as my process, it usually starts, um, it starts with what's the story? It starts yeah. with what am I saying? So it and comes from a cerebral, cerebral place? Yeah, and I was telling RJ, when I, when I write lyrics a lot of times, what I'll do is I'll sing whatever is off the top of my head, mm-hmm. I go back and decipher it, and then I think about subconsciously what was I really thinking about? Yeah. What, was there a certain thing that happened that triggered that? And then I'll sit there, and from there, I will start crafting the story and start putting in the clever bits and all that sort of stuff. This is so interesting to me, because as you'll hear in the next couple of minutes, everyone has got like a different process, and there's no right or wrong answer. Mm-hmm. Jacob, thank you so much for thank everything. You, Missy. So thank Missy for putting this on, please. Give her a hand. <laughs> oh, geek boy. Come on up here, RJ. Um, <laughs> I wish I could do a behind the song with everyone. Obviously, I can't. So obviously, I always lean towards the... Oh, thank you. I, this is one that doesn't work so much. Wow. Um, <laughs> how honest of you. But I do feel like that um, every, I wish I could do behind this song with everyone, but I just can't. So I always lean towards our, our guys that, and girls that are getting ready to release material and stuff. Um, so, RJ, tell us about your process in writing. Um, when I first started writing, if you can't tell, Jacob and I, we work together a lot. We're like a dubious duo. My process started off with saying, hey, Jacob, can we record something? I don't know what to do. <laughs> and then we'd show up, and he'd be like, play something. I was like, okay, I could play something. And he's like, okay, now write this for it. I was like, okay, I can write this for it. And he's like, you're, <laughs> you're an idiot. Why don't you just do right. that? Uh, my process is weird because mm. I'm, I'm not that good at writing if I don't know what I'm going to do. Like, I, don't, I, don't like to, I want to be able to force myself and say, I'm going to write something right now. But I, I can't. Like, the songs that I like the best, I wrote in two hours tops because it's just like it all comes out the songs that i do have a process with usually that process is writing it hating it and then coming back to it four months later and it works i think everybody that is is songwriters here can completely relate to that um what do you think songwriting has this past year how has your style changed what changed oh it went from piano ballads to trying to do everything i mean I, I tried to get a heavier sound just because, like, my, my influence has changed a lot. It started as Billy Joel. I was like, I'm going to be Billy Joel part two. Just yes. you wait. I remember we went through a Gavin DeGraw phase. You went through I- a Gavin DeGraw phase. <laughs> oh, my God. That was so real. <laughs> okay. I thought it was I a weave. you just pulled me along with you. It sounds I mean, like me. Okay. So we went through this. <laughs> yeah, we went through this Gavin DeGraw phase. Okay, what the, came, what, anyway, fair, what came after Gavin DeGraw? The fair, uh, <laughs> oh, yes. Well, I roped Jacob in. I roped you in. I'm always looking for a young boy to... Ah! I'm always looking for a young fella to do this. I have to watch what I say all the time. I'm like, I'm going to pinch your butt. And somebody's like, you can't do that. And I was like, <laughs> I have to watch it. But I'm always looking for young guys, you know, to do these things. Here's and me. I roped you in. You did fantastic. Jacob made it to finals, which that was his first time. That was unusual. Stop oh, being modest. God, I lie all the time then because I think I tell everybody finals. That's terrible. Um, so this past year, you feel like you've evolved as a musician and a songwriter? Oh, yeah. And I, I think my attitude adapted, and that kind of helped. I kind of went from, okay, I need to get this out now to it'll happen when it happens. Yeah. And, and that kind of helped because then rather than sitting down and writing and freaking out saying, it's not good enough, it's not good enough, I need to cut it. I kind of went back and looked, and I was like, you know, the, like I actually liked those. Yeah. Like, I just got to change this, change this. I have one song that I'm, I'm almost done with that is actually a compilation of three previous songs that I wrote. Yes. That I just like, I was like, you know, I like this lyric from this one and this lyric from this one. Wait a minute, right. those rhyme. Let's just put them together. Right. That, and that's, that happens a lot, too, so that's interesting to hear. So let me ask you this. What... What, when I ask you what your reel is, it, all my students know what I mean by that. A recommend it if you like. That's what pops up on Spotify and Apple Music. When somebody releases a song, you automatically have a recommendation. And so I always tell my songwriters, know who you are as an artist and know who your reels are. Who's your reel? I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't I'm not going to lie. I, I'm, Missy, we, I had, know, problems, get out of we here. had problems with lessons. We didn't do it for a while. So uh, uh, I forgot uh, all your lingo. There's, I mean, like, that was a, the wrong person to ask that. Yeah, I got you. I know, but I'm not going to say. Can you repeat the question? No. I, and I know, but I'm not going to say, but this is something we'll discuss. 
because I know who your reels are. But that's always funny. I do. <laughs> okay, and I don't what, know myself. <laughs> what piece of advice Maybe would I do you like give? Maybe like having to grow. <laughs> Yes, John yeah, Mayer. Mayor, yeah, that's definitely one. Billy Joel definitely is still. I still think Gavin DeGraw, and y'all can just whatever. Okay, maybe. Well. Ish. Yeah, do you, you want to come help me? <laughs> yes. Give us one piece of advice you would give to a young songwriter that um, is struggling. Don't force anything. Like, I, I was definitely one who tried to force things, and I didn't like it. I, I did at the time. I was like, oh, yeah, this is, this is going to work. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get this out straight to the top of the charts. I was like, you know, like, I love music, but then I went to college. I'm still doing music at college, but it's not, like, my thing. Like, I'm not, I need to, I need to make it or it's over. Mm -hmm. And that took a lot of pressure off of me because yes. while I was here, it was, like, the thing that I did. Yes. It was, like, music seven days a week, rehearsals every two a day. And then I went to college, and I was like, okay, well, I love it, but I don't need it. Yeah. And that's when you get in a really good position. I know that this past year, I've seen you grow. I think a lot of it was because you're starting to see yourself now as an artist, as your own person and standing alone. And I think college probably has helped with that level of independence. I'm so proud of you. Looking forward to your new release this year. This is going to be a lot of fun. We'll have an artist showcase with RJ this winter, so that'll be fun.